All right, the last part of section 8.2 deals with solving simple, simple rational equations. We're going to do three examples. I'm going to do the first one, then I'm going to have you do the other two. So example one, x squared minus 9 divided by x plus 3 is equal to 7. If you recall the other videos, first thing we need to do is put parentheses around any addition or subtraction. So the minus 9 goes with x squared, and the plus 3 goes with the x. So we need to do that. Second thing, write any values for x for which the denominator, the denominator, oops, spelled that wrong, the denominator is equal to 0. Well, my denominator is x plus 3. What value can x not be? If I minus 3 to both sides, x cannot be negative 3. Cannot. That is, an, that is a value that will not work to solve this problem. All right. So, at this point, I notice we've got a square. That means we've got a factor. x squared minus 9. Well, that's easy. That's a perfect square binomial. That's x plus 3 and x minus 3 on top divided by parenthesis x plus 3 on the bottom, which equals 7. Well, very simply, the x plus 3s cancel out, which leaves me a very simple equation right there. x minus 3 equals 7. I add 3 to both sides, and I find out my answer to this problem is 10. And if I put 10 in here for x, 10 squared is 100, minus 9, I get 91 on the top. And if I put 10 in here, 10 plus 3 is 13, 91 divided by 13 is 7, and it checks. So there you go. That's how you solve a simple rational equation. Your turn. Why don't you do number 2? Pause the video and go ahead and work on it. All right, again, I put in parentheses. And I look at the denominator, and I realize that x cannot be the number 1. x cannot, cannot be 1. Well, now I'm going to factor the numerator. That factors into x. Uh, we need a minus, and we need a plus. What does that turn out to be? It looks like plus 4 and minus 1. And on the denominators, x minus 1 is equal to 5. Okay, good. Perfect. Our x minus 1's cancel out, and I get x plus 4 equals 5, and if I solve that, I minus 4 to both sides, and I get x equals 1. Uh-oh! It says up here, x cannot be 1, but I did get an answer of 1. I cannot put 1 right there into my original problem and get a solution, therefore this problem does not have a solution. Hope you understand that. If not, make sure you ask during class. Does not have a solution. Last one. Go ahead and solve this. All right, I put my parentheses in. x squared minus 25, x minus 5. I factor the numerator, which becomes x plus 5 and x minus 5. The whole thing over x minus 5. Oops, I forgot one very important thing. What can x not be? x minus 5 cannot be 0, so therefore x cannot be 5. Can't. Can't be 5. All right, so let's go back down here and finish this. Equals 14. It looks like the x minus 5s cancel out which leaves me x plus 5 equals 14, and I minus 5 from both sides, and I get x equals 9, and that is a valid number. It says it can't be 5, so x equals 9 is our solution. And that's it, people. That's how you solve very simple, rational equations.